So today I have a very silly little video planned for you, and what I want to talk about are the categories of Linux users. Now, it is hard to categorize and generalize people in general, because there are probably as many categories to describe people as there are people itself, but I thought it would be fun to kind of try. So my theory is this. I think that there are about seven different categories of Linux users. Some of them are very generation specific. So it really does kind of count when you came into the Linux community. So some of that has played into the idea of the categories that I've come up with. Some of them, not so much. So today, what I want to do is talk about the seven different categories of Linux users. And I think that this should be a little bit fun. So first, before I jump in, if you would be so kind as to leave a thumbs up on this video, I'd really appreciate it. It does help the channel. So I should also mention that just because you're a member of one category that I'm going to talk about in this video doesn't mean that you can't automatically be in another category as well. I know that there are several people who apply to at least two of these categories, probably three. So it's not going to be one size fits all or anything like that. And, and there's nothing scientific or anything about this. So it's just a little bit of fun and that's what we're going to do. So the first category of Linux user that I have come up with are the gray beards. Now, I don't want to be ageist and call these people old because many of them many of them are not old they're in their 40s or 50s that's not really old i'm just more talking about these are the people who have been around linux since the beginning they are the elder statesmen if you will the wise elders that are the guides of the linux community for the most part right they've been around since the beginning they suffered through every step that Linux took all the way from version 1.0 or even before and they're still around to this day they're still contributing and being a part of the Linux community they are the gray beards they are the respected wise elders and this group is still fairly large and they are a very vocal presence of the Linux community so the gray beards are perhaps maybe even the most important category that we have on this list and because they do play such a huge role not only in where Linux is continuing to go but where it has been in the past like, like the progression of Linux can be put on the shoulders of many of these gray beards so I call them gray beards not because they necessarily have gray beards but just because they have been around for a long time so so that is the first category the second one and honestly these first two do overlap quite a bit but I think that they can be separate. The second one I termed the I used Linux before it was cool group and these are the folks who came into Linux not necessarily at the beginning but in the late 90s to about 2007. These are the folks who used it before Ubuntu was created and they suffered through the trials and tribulations of getting audio and networking and all this stuff to work on Linux. They were there before games were really a thing on Linux. They were there before it was really all that easy to install Linux. These are the folks who perhaps are not quite old enough to be graybeards, but they've been around the block a time or two. So if you are someone who has used Linux that long, or maybe you were on Linux back then, I would say you are a part of this group. You used Linux before it was cool. The third one is the Ubuntu babies. These are the folks who came into the Linux community when Ubuntu was created. Now, Ubuntu has been around since 2004, and I actually didn't think it was that old. I, I'd forgotten that it was, I thought it was about 2008 when it first came out, but it's been around since 2004. This category exists simply because Ubuntu, I don't think that a lot of people these days, at least the newer generation, really understand how pivotal the releases are of Ubuntu was in those early days. Linux before Ubuntu came out was hard to install or at least harder to install and had a lot of problems with audio and video and networking and all this stuff and hard especially with hardware compatibility it had a hard hard time. When Ubuntu came out it didn't solve all those problems overnight despite what a lot of people think but it was one of the first distributions that was actually focused on bringing in new users, not only new technologically advanced users, but the regular normal people to Linux. Now, obviously, it did not succeed when it comes to bringing in masses and masses of people, but it did succeed in the fact that it made Linux more normie friendly. 
It's the first distribution, really, that was focused on making that possible. That was focused on making it a normie-friendly thing to do, and I don't think that we give that enough credit. So, it brought in a lot of different people. It brought in a generation of Linux users who were finally able to use Linux on their machines for the first time. These are the Ubuntu babies. Now, I don't want to... <laughs> again, we're using ageist terms, but we should just say that they were, have been around since the mid-2000s or so, and I would say that even nowadays we do have the creation of some new Ubuntu babies out there. Ubuntu still does draw in a lot of people to Linux, even though it has become less in vogue, shall we say, than years past. So the Ubuntu Babies group is the third category. The fourth one is going to piss a lot of people off, and that is the Arch Elitist. Now, Arch has been around since 2002, so it's a little bit older than Ubuntu. And I don't exactly know all of the history behind Arch, the ups and downs of the popularity, but I do know that there is a stereotype, a meme, if you will, surrounding Arch and its usage. And we all know that person. We all know the person who has to tell you that they use Arch. And while I have argued that that is no longer all that impressive, it always has been something that people like to brag about. And there's a reason why there's a meme surrounding that thing. I used Arch, by the way. These are the Arch elitists. That's the group that I'm talking about now. The Arch elitists are people who are drawn into Linux because they used Arch Linux. That they're very proud of the fact that they used Arch Linux, that they built their system from scratch, and they want to tell everyone. Now, it's become less of a thing over the course of the last few years to be proud of Arch Linux simply because it's very easy to install Arch Linux these days, but it's still a thing. There's still a community out there that's very, very impressed with themselves because they use Arch Linux, and that is the fourth category. Now, the fifth one is pretty general, and again, it has a lot to do with a period of time in Linux history. And that category is the gamers. Now, gaming and Linux hasn't always gone hand in hand. We all know this, the vast majority of people who are fit into the first two or three categories would be able to tell you that gaming on Linux was not a thing really until fairly recently. In fact, it was almost a meme to the point where people would scoff at you if you said you were a Linux gamer. Like, yeah, if you were a Linux gamer back in 2003, you were not really a gamer, you know what I mean? The point is, is that Linux has become more gamer-friendly over the course of the last year, few years because of the advent of Proton and all of the technologies surrounding Proton and Steam. So gaming has become a thing on Linux where it really wasn't before. And because of the Steam Deck, it has brought in many more Linux users. We've heard just recently that Linux has overtaken Mac OS as the number two operating system on Steam at, as a gaming distro, or as a gaming operating system, I should say. And this was done primarily because of the Steam Deck and how it was released a couple years ago, and people are just using it now. You could argue whether or not those people are actually using Linux because they're not using the Linux features, they're just using Steam. We can have that argument another day, but really, they're using Linux, I think. So, the gamers is an entire section of people who use Linux, not necessarily because it's Linux, but because either, either because they're using the Steam Deck, or because they have decided that they would much rather game on Linux because they have other uses for it, right? So, the gamers are another category that exists. The next one is the hardest category to define, simply because it could be theoretically apply to everyone who uses Linux. Now, I say that because everyone who uses Linux probably does so at least a little bit because they hate Windows. At least a little bit. Now, whether or not that's your main reason for using Linux or not, it doesn't really matter. You probably have a small portion of you inside of you that just doesn't like, like win Windows, so you're rebelling against Microsoft and using Linux instead. So the Rebels category could, like I said, apply to everyone, but that's not really what I'm talking about when I talk about the Rebels. The Rebels really are the people who are very anti-corporation. These people are so anti-corporation that they'll find themselves using pieces of software that legitimately disadvantage themselves to the usage of their computer. I said that a little weird. 
let me see if I can try it again. They use pieces of software that make it harder for them to use their computer simply because those pieces of software have nothing to do with corporations. And I'm talking about the people who refuse to use System D. I'm talking about the people who refuse to use a mainstream distro simply because the distribution was made by a corporation. And there's any number of examples of this out there in the Linux community where people have taken software and forked it just because they want to have no association with Red Hat or Canonical or Microsoft or Google or SUSE or, you know, whatever. You know, there are any number of examples of this. These are the rebels. These are the people who are going to be very, very anti-immutable distribution forever simply because the immutability of distributions seems to be something that is being pushed for by corporate bag distributions. They're very anti-Flatpak because Flatpak is backed by a cor corporation. They're very anti-Snap because Snap is is made by a corporation. So like I said, there are any number of examples of, that could go along with this. And these, these rebels choose to use distributions and software that is very free. They're the geeks users. They're the ones who use the Libre kernel that don't, doesn't have any proprietary blobs in it whatsoever. You know, the ones who are very, very, very open source positive. Most people don't fall, fall into this category. They're perfectly okay using SystemD. They're okay using Chrome, some of them. You know, they're, they're not so anti-corporate that they can't see the benefits sometimes of using something that is corporate backed. But the rebels want nothing to do with that. So that's the second to last category that exists. The last one is the broadest category of them all, and that is the noobs. Now, I don't think that this really means what everyone thinks it means. It doesn't mean that you just started using Linux yesterday, because I started using Linux full-time in 2017. And I don't think that I'm anywhere near not being a noob. I consider myself an eternal Linux noob. I t I've talked about this before. So I don't think that it has anything to do with the amount of time you've been using Linux. More it has to do with your general attitude towards Linux. And what I mean by that is that you consider Linux very new to you always. You're always searching for new things. You're looking for alternatives and stuff. Maybe you just or hop quite a bit. Maybe you hop between desktop environments a lot or window managers quite a lot. You're always looking for better pieces of software. You're always trying out new things. You're the Linux noob. You're very curious about things. Now, like I said at the beginning, just because you're a graybeard doesn't mean you're not also a Linux noob. <laughs> I, I know a lot of people who have been using Linux since the very beginning who still distro hop just, mu just as much as I do, or at least as much as I did, I should say. So, it doesn't mean just because you've been around for a long time doesn't mean you can't also be a noob. It just when I talk about noobs, I'm more talking about your curiosity when it comes to trying new things. And I think that this, like I said, is a very broad category because just simply because it's not necessarily just about whether or not you just started using Linux. So those are the seven categories of Linux users that I came up with. I'm sure there are probably a couple more that I missed out on. If you have thoughts on categories that I could have talked about, leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. If you haven't already, leave a thumbs up on this video. And uh, I would also like to hear from you in the comments on what category you consider yourself a part of. What kind of Linux user are you? You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. Also, I don't pimp this out very uh, much, but there is a PeerTube instance where I host some of my videos. Usually the most recent 5 to 10, 15 videos are up there. Uh, that Those links are in the video description as well. So if you are interested in going heading over to PeerTube, you can go over there and watch some of my most recent videos as well. So uh, thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near uh, where it is right now, so thank you so very much. I do realize that I have a couple uh, YouTube members that are brand new and a new Patreon that I, that's not on the list, list that I'm showing right now, so I'll get to that this evening and get that updated. Uh, but thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all awesome. Thank you so very much. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.